In this video, I'll demonstrate how to convert your signature into vector art using image trace in Adobe Illustrator. A quick note on vector art. Vector graphics are points, lines, curves, and shapes that are based on mathematical formulas. In comparison, raster art, like this photo, is created using colored pixels. So when you enlarge a raster file with pixel-based art, the edges will look jagged and the quality is lost. However, when you scale vector art, there's no pixelation or loss of quality. You can also use the direct selection tool on vector art to click and drag anchor points around, and you can change colors and such. So I'll show you how to turn your image into vector art. I'll start with a new print document, and I'll use a portrait artboard. Then I'll go to File, Place, and I took a photo of my first name written in cursive and saved it to a folder in my Creative Cloud. I'll click and drag out a box for my image to be placed. I only want the writing itself and not the extra space, so I'll go up to the Control Panel and choose Crop Image. You may get this pop-up saying that this crop won't affect the original photo. That's very good, so you can just click OK. Then click and drag in to remove any unwanted negative space, getting nice and close to the lettering. And then apply that crop. We'll use this signature for a creative character project, but if you don't know how to write your name in cursive, you can type it out with the type tool, then highlight it and go to this list of typeface options to pick one that's in cursive. Since you highlighted your name, it will use it as the sample text. And this typeface works nicely for me. I'll choose the medium version, and I'll be sure to use it as reference to write my name, connecting the S and the T together though. A piece of printer paper or marker work best for this project. Avoid lined paper and pencil if you can. And a cell phone is great for taking the photo. Just use good lighting to avoid getting the phone's shadow in your shot. Then back in the control panel, we have this dropdown for a list of tracing presets. For this example, we're gonna use black and white logo. Click on that and you'll see your signature turn from a photo into vector art. Then go up to the top and click the expand button to turn this single image into a group of multiple objects which can be manipulated individually. I had my direct selection tool, the white arrow, used to select it, so you might not see all of these blue anchor points like I do. Just make sure your object is selected, and then you'll go up to Object and Ungroup. Continue to ungroup until the option is grayed out. And then over in your Layers panel, and if you don't see your Layers panel, go to Window and choose Layers. You have your signature as a compound path. You can see which layer is which by turning off and on its visibility. Depending upon your image, Illustrator may have made double paths or turned loops into separate paths, which you don't need and you can delete. Just keep a close eye on the image to make sure you don't accidentally delete something you need. This is all you have to do to turn your handwriting into vector art, but for those who would like to know more about image trace, I'll show you another example using this photo of a drawing of a vase with flowers. It has a black outline and blue, green, and pink colors. In this tab, I have examples of this same image with each preset applied to it. The first column is the original image, and the other columns have the preset. The High Fidelity Photo Preset creates photorealistic artwork of high fidelity, meaning that the lines are faithful to the original. Low Fidelity creates a more simplified photorealistic image. You can compare and contrast the two to see slight differences in the lines. The second row deals with the presets having to do with color. We have first the image reduced to only three colors. You can see we lose some of the different values of pink and blue. Here we have six colors and we've gained a couple of those values back. And since the artwork has limited colors to begin with, you won't see much of a difference between the six and 16 color presets. In the next row, our colors change to black and white. So here we have it turned into shades of gray. 
All of the values are removed in black and white logo, leaving only black lines. Sketched art is similar to black and white logo, but it automatically ignores white, which I'll go over in a moment, and it focuses less on corners, where black and white logo is more likely to have sharp corners turned into corner points. In the next row, Silhouettes converts pixels with a high threshold to black and a low threshold to white. Line Art turns lines to strokes, and Technical Drawing does the same, but it has more sharp corners. And these two differ from Black and White Logo and Sketched Art because they turn lines into strokes instead of fills, which Logo and Sketched Art use instead. In the last row, I'll turn this original into a high fidelity photo and I'll bring up the image trace panel. You could click on it here or you can go over to window and select image trace. Here you've got the list of presets and these icons are very similar to the presets which we pretty much went over here above in the columns and rows. You have the modes of color, grayscale, and black and white. And under the color mode, you also have some palette options. Full tone uses the entire set of colors for the tracing palette. This is best for creating photorealistic artwork. Limited uses a small set of colors, best for smaller file sizes, and automatic switches between the limited palette and the full tone, depending on the input of your image. And you can adjust this slider to go between color simplicity and accuracy. Next, I'm going to turn this image into a black and white logo, and I'll show you some more features in this panel. Up here, you can adjust the view of your traced image. A tracing object is made up of two components, the original source image and then the tracing result or the vector artwork. So you can choose either the tracing results with an outline, just the outlines, the source image, and other options. Threshold specifies a value for black and white. All pixels lighter than the threshold value are converted to white and all pixels darker than the threshold value are converted to black. Paths controls the distance between the traced shape and the original pixel shape. So the lower values create a looser path fitting and higher values create a tighter path fitting. Again, corners is the likeliness that a sharp bend is gonna turn into a corner point. A higher value results in more corners. You can't see much of a difference in my image, but you may see a difference with yours. Noise specifies an area of pixels that are ignored while tracing, and a lower value would result in more noise. You would notice this more if you were using a high resolution image. These icons specify the method used for tracing. Abutting creates cut out paths and overlapping creates stacked paths. Where you would really notice this would be in your layers after you expand your image, but I haven't done that yet. Fills and strokes are something that you'll want to pay attention to. Fill creates filled regions in the tracing result and strokes creates stroked paths with adjustable stroke weight. Depending on what you're doing next with your image, this could be something that you would want to consider. By default, black and white logo creates fills. Snap curves to lines means that if a line is near zero or 90 degrees, it will be snapped into that place. Ignore white is very helpful. If you use the abutting method, this specifies if the white areas are to be replaced with fills or not. So I'll show you that once I have expanded this image, the white frame around it is now gone. I didn't need it anyway, so it's one less thing to deal with. So I suggest turning on ignore white when possible. The last image in this row shows all the changes that I've made to the image once I turned it into vector art. So I changed the colors and I selected everything and used the puppet warp tool. And that allowed me to grab these pins and change the shape and placement of each of the flowers. 
So image trace is a great way to turn a photo into vector art. However, there are some negatives. Depending on the image, it can make things more difficult and it can dramatically slow down your computer. So I suggest using it for smaller drawings, not necessarily large complex sketches. Now this is a great place to save our work. So I'm going to save mine to the Creative Cloud in a folder for this class. And I save it as my first name, last initial, underscore what it is. And this is unit 02.1 image trace. I'll save and click OK. And that is how you use image trace to convert your signature into vector art in Adobe Illustrator.